Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and today I want to talk with you about the RTX 4060 mobile for notebooks. And uh, I am not a fan of uh, gaming notebooks or, uh, you know, buying computers like laptop for gaming because well I think your money is best invested on like a proper desktop but I do understand there are circumstances where you want to play games you don't want to you know stop playing your games but also you don't have the space or you're going to university or you're going to travel a lot or something and you want something that allows you also to play video games and recently I was given this laptop by my work because I needed a more a beefy computer for some of the work I do and it happens that this laptop has an RTX 4060 with uh, unlimited, t well not unlimited but not um, capped uh, TDP, it has the full TDP which is 150 watts, it also comes with an i9 um, 3900H, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 and 2 terabytes of NVMe storage. So. Uh, having said that, I thought, well, I'm not going to review this laptop, and the reason is because obviously I don't review laptops, but also because that laptop is sort of custom made. It's made by a company here in the UK, and it's made by order. So it's not like a laptop you can buy and buy certain model like I want an else, Asus or MC, uh, MSA or a Gigabyte or anything like that. So th there is no point in me reviewing it because you are not going to go to store and buy it. But I, uh, you are probably going to find lots of gaming or different laptops with an RTX 4060 in it and because this one has the full TDP I thought it would be interesting to give you an idea of how an RTX 4060 performs on today's game and if DLSS 3 can make a big difference as to justify you know the, the existence of this car but we have to separate this from the desktop card, which I think is an entire different thing when it comes to price and performance. This uh, RTX also uses the same die as the desktop uh, part. So it's, they are very, very similar in performance, even though this one is a little bit different in terms of clocks. So having said that, and before showing you the results, and you know how my, my results are done, I have to ask, any one of you watching this video to please subscribe to the channel to like and share the video because I know it's annoying to remind this and to say it but it does help me a lot every comment every like every sharing every subscription does help me a lot remember I'm not even monetizing this channel at the moment that making it more difficult for me to acquire new hardware to be able to review it and to bring it to the channel so please um, subscribe uh, share it with your friends if you haven't subscribed do it because that way as as soon as I get to the 1,000 subscriber, I will be able to um, start monetizing. I have some videos that unfortunately I lost the, the, the monetization on them that has more than 40,000 views and well, you know, I'm not going to make any money out of them. But uh, the only reason I need this is so we, I can start, you know, getting some uh, monetization to be able to buy more hardware. So I really ask you, it's free and you will help me a lot. Having said that, now let's go to the research. And let's start the test with Spider-Man Miles Morales. In this case, I'm going to be testing all or 95% of the games in 1080p because I think that's, you know, because of the bandwidth of the memory, that's the uh, resolution we have to um, choose to get the best results. So some games are not going to be a scale as good at 1440p because of the memory. But however, that is something we can see on another video. Starting with Spider-Man Miles Morales, I have to say I was uh, surprised to see the results because as you can see this is going around 60 fps at 1080p very high with ray tracing on very high and that's another thing i have to say i'm going to be pushing the graphical fidelity of this because to me there is no point if you can activate like ray tracing on things like that and of course if the game is running with ray tracing you know it's going to perform even better without so i think uh, i prefer to push the graphical limitations of this uh, uh, rtx 4060 mobile version so continue with Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, I decided to activate the LSS quality just to see how much of a game we could get on these games. And well, with this, we can get over 70 FPS. And in that case, we are going to iron out those little dips that we had before under 60 in case that's important for you. Because also one thing I've noticed recently is that every or most of uh, gaming laptops comes with some sort of VRR or G-Sync monitor. So that's quite good because you don't need to uh, point for like a 
fixed uh, frame rate like 60 fps or uh, 30 fps you can have you know vi variable in fact the laptop i'm testing this has a 240 hertz a 1440p monitor so that's very good and because of the size it's 1080p still looks very good but of course the point here is to try and see if dlss DLSS 3 can make a difference. In this case, we can activate that in Spider Man Miles Morales. And even though we see an improvement around 10 to 15 FPS, I don't think it's the big improvement we were looking for. However, I will say that this is better than just playing at uh, playing. Um, uh, um, native resolution and frame rate many people don't like this because they say they are fake and so on look for all i care i don't care who is making the frames if it's a, a aa car ea car if it's a physics car i don't care as long as they look good on the screen that's all i care and if frame generation you know it's always fake and and I, I honestly don't care i only care about what my eyes can see on the monitor and this one looks very good then the next game i wanted to test is one that doesn't support the lss3 uh, um um, at least officially, which in this case is the Last of Us Power 1. And I will have to say I'm really surprised because I was expecting worse. I was expecting I had to activate DLSS somehow. But no, you can see here the game at 1080p high, uh, running over 60 FPS, no hitch. Um, you know, running quite good. I think um, the reason I didn't go over high is because it requires more VRAM. And the RTX 4060 comes with 8GB of VRAM. So high is more than enough and it's... I think it's already at the PlayStation 5 level. So as you can see here, the game is running very well. I'm sure we can play this at 1440p if we use DLSS uh, for this game. Then the next game I'm using is one that doesn't support any kind of DLSS. And this in case is Resident Evil 4. I chose the RT preset and the 1080p resolution, which is one that are, we are using. And you can see here in this scene, I like to test that we are going over 60 FPS at all times. Even I will say that the medium could probably be around 70 FPS. FPS. So once again, I'm very surprised that we can get to this level of quality and fidelity on a mobile chip that is not even the high end. So I find that these uh, sort of um, results are quite good um, for people, you know, that needs to play on the go because uh, that's the only solution they have. I think this is really good, to be honest. I was expecting worse, but I have been decently surprised so far. Then another game you like I, that you guys know I like to test is Dying Light 2 because it's really a very good game graphically and has been improved of, with patches and so on. So here we can see 1080p, the highest ray trace preset, and well, the game is running at around 40 FPS, which if you have a VRR monitor, maybe uh, in, your, in the range, uh, depending on the monitor. But well, you know, if you don't, then you will have to limit to 30 FPS, which... Well, it's not ideal, but at least you can play. And remember, we're using ray tracing. If you remove every, all kind of ray tracing, the game is obviously going to perform better. But before we start, you know, lowering the visual quality of the games, at least on terror of feature, let's start activating some options like DLSS. And in this case, we put the game on DLSS quality, and that's all we needed to get at least around 60 FPS. There is going to be some dips here and there, but I think, you know, it still looks very good. Some people say that you shouldn't use like DLSS at 1080p. I disagree with that because I think DLSS quality and even in some games balance, it still gives you very good quality. I wouldn't say it's native when you use balance, and but, you know, in movement, it's, you can barely see the difference. And the important thing is that you're still having those nice uh, rays being traced. So you are sacrificing some clarity for better visuals so to me are more important than performance or uh, image clarity necessarily so i think I, I think this is a win here right here and we probably can play this at 1440p because when we activate dlss frame generation then the games go over 90 fps and it feels really smooth and really good so i'm quite sure if you put this game at 1440p with dlss on quality and frame generation this game will easily hit the 60 fps so uh, you can take advantage of that of course I'm not taking advantage of the 240 hertz that the monitor has because for this I will have to hit 240 hertz. However, I would say that still, if you're playing an old game, you're probably going to achieve that. But anyway, in any case, it's still. I am using, you know, 100 FPS frame generation and the game is looking quite smooth. So I, I will say again, DLSS 3 is quite a help uh, to get so those games running at a higher frame rate. 
Now, another game that I was surprised, it may be because I finished this game a while ago, so may, probably some patches later, this game is running much better than uh, on launch because now we can get 1080p, almost 60 FPS uh, with ray tracing and ultra, with ray tracing in ultra. That to me is, uh, I don't think it was possible like, uh, you know, when the game was launched. So this game is running much better now. You can see here we are almost achieving 60 FPS at all times, not using any sort of DLSS or anything, which to me was quite quite surprising because I was expecting more towards 40 to 45 FPS, but no, that's not what you need. This game is running so much better now that, and so what happens when we activate the LSS on quality and frame generation and it's mind blowing. We get over a hundred FPS on certain areas and 90 on the rest. And I think, you know, nobody was expecting that. I, I repeat myself. I know many people don't like these sort of techniques, but to my eye, as long as as they look good and the frame that is generated it is what is supposed to be i don't have any problems with these guys i i just want to play uh, the best possible quality and at the best a higher um uh, frame rate i will prefer visual fidelity over frame rate but if i can have both well, then yes i'm going to and harry um, howard's legacy is looking amazing at more than 100 fps on this rtx 4060 mobile then this is the only game i tested at 1440p which is a street fighter 6 and as you can see i'm not even using 60 percent of gpu utilization so this means that we could probably go higher i'm using the highest present and the game is running at a very stable 60 fps yeah, there could be a dip here and there, but I don't think anybody will notice. This is a game that is running quite good. And I wanted to test it because, you know, it's not a super heavy game, but it's a game that requires, you know, those smooth 60 FPS. And we were able to take it to 1440p. It doesn't have like a DLSS or anything like that. So we cannot use those techniques. So you can see you can play native at this game at 60 FPS with no issues whatsoever, which is good news for this uh, GPU. Then obviously I have to test Cyberpunk. Even today, Cyberpunk is one of the most demanding games, graphically speaking. And in this case, I'm not going to test without ray tracing because there is no point from my point of view to do that. So I'm using 1080p and with the preset of ray tracing ultra with DLSS on quality. And even though we are not right there on 60, you know, the average could be 60, but we have dips here and there. I still think it's amazing that we can just play now on mobile at 60 FPS with full ray tracing on this game i have to say this is not the overdrive mode this is the rt ultra okay we're going to see the overdrive in a little bit but right now i'm just playing ray tracing ultra and i think this looks amazing and phenomenal so if you play without ray tracing you're going to get much higher frame rate but now we activate the lss frame regeneration keeping the ray tracing ultra and we get around 80 fps that's a wing of around uh, 25 to 30 FPS, which is quite good, all things considered, because you're going to have a, a much smoother experience if you have the right monitor to enjoy it. And even if you don't, and you have only 60 Hz, you're going to be able to, you know, smooth or iron out any dips. Because remember, the good thing about DLSS 3 is not only that it's going to uh, improve the frame rate, but it's also that it's going to need a less CPU power to achieve those frames. So if you, even if you don't have like the latest uh, CPU, uh, DLSS S3 is going to help and now let's try the overdrive mode that is running right here and with this we had to lower the DLS to balance because on quality you were getting around 55 FPS but when you get to balance then you can get over 70 FPS which give you those nice rays so I think I probably will have gone maybe to 1440p performance just to get uh, 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 the best of both worlds however you can see here I would prefer all day this sort of quality because I don't think the LSS look bad at all here, you know, having overdrive and the frame rate and everything to just play like really nice. Uh, so I, as I said, I prefer visual quality over anything. So to, to me, uh, having the best of both worlds is a win-win in every situation. Finally, I'm going to test the Witcher 3, the next gen patch, the latest version that comes with all the Ray goodies and everything. And here we are using DLSS balance and DLSS frame generation. We know this is a very demanding game because of the way it's been ported. Uh, well, you know, I have to say we can get those 60 FPS. You can see some artifacts here in the grass. You know, they look a little bit uh, jaggy when you move around, but I think that's uh, the worst thing I have ever seen. And I don't think it's too distracting or distracting at all when you're playing. So um, that's all. 
everything else looks really good and really crisp considering it's 1080p. So from my point of view, I will any day use these techniques instead of just having to lower visual quality. But here you go, the RTX 4060 mobile. Well, as you saw, I think the RTX 4060 is a very phenomenal uh, GPU for a mobile laptop. I was very surprised to see what it's capable of. And maybe it's because I'm not a huge gaming um, a laptop gamer. You know, I don't like um, to play on laptops or notebooks because, um, well, I have a desktop and they're more powerful. So maybe someone else would say, well, there is not too much difference between this and uh, oh, last year 3060 or 3060 Ti. However, if you're looking right now for a new laptop and you 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 you, you can't spend the money to go to like a 4070 or 48 or anything like that, I think the 4060 will give you a very good um, performance, especially considering the fact that all, every single game tested, I tried to test it at the maximum possible quality, even using ray tracing, and it, they were all playable. And I know, I know what many of you may be thinking, like, yeah, but you were using like DLSS and DLSS frame generation to achieve high frame rates. Uh, all I'm going to say is this, look guys, I'm going to use any trick in the book to make my games look at the best possible and also to run as best as possible. I prefer visual fidelity. That means if I have to play at 30 or 60, and that's the difference between playing without or with ray tracing, I will always prefer to, uh, for example, to play ray tracing 30 FPS than um, 60 FPS without ray tracing. But that's my choice, right? But the good thing here is I don't have to choose. I can use the LSS and also the LSS frame generation. And I don't care if those frames are fake. I don't care. I don't care if the resolution is being invented. I don't care who creates those frames. For all I care, the, all the frames can be fake as long as they look good and they are supposed to be what they are supposed to be. Why do we care if they are not real, you know, power or not? They 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 look great. They they the game looks smooth. It performs fast. So for me, it's a win-win. But to each their own, okay? In any case, I think the frame generation here does a very good job at improving frame rates and also to lower the CPU usage. That means that in future games that use the LSS3, that if, they get, if your CPU, because in this case I have a 13900H, but if you get a um, less powerful CPU that, that doesn't give you all the good results, then you can still use the LSS3 frame generation in order to double your frame rate and without worrying about the CPU not being capable of. And if the problem is the GPU in some games, then you can use the LSS quality balance just to improve your chances. So from my point of view, I'm going to use every trick to make my games look better. And this RTX 4060 is full of tricks, so use them. I was very surprised and I think anyone looking for, you know, a casual or even um, intense uh, gaming sessions on a notebook and want something that they can go around, they will no go wrong with the 4060. I think it has um, takes every single box. You are going to be able to achieve anything you want with this car, unless of course you want more like 4K gaming or something. This is not the car for you. And I won't say it's not even for 1440p. Some games may go right. Some games, maybe you can use the LSS, but I would think that the, uh, this is uh, pointed to 1080p. And that's just because of the memory bandwidth which we know is just 128 bits and the configuration is 8 gigabytes of VRAM that I have shown that for me is more than enough if you're going to play with that. We have shown that here even playing overdrive games in Cyberpunk, okay? So I hope this uh, little review and comment you like. Um, well, you know, as always, see you on the next video.